All right, Bobo, put all the money in this box, or we'll play another tune on the violin. Okay, Pretzel, let's get out of here. For me, name's not Sergeant Patch. Ah, perfect. We got away with a million bucks. Yeah, Rocky, and nothing can go wrong now. But later, high over Lost Valley, something did go wrong. The plane made a sharp turn and... You jake! You turned so sharp, the money box fell out. And it's going down into Lost Valley. Lost Valley? But nobody can get into Lost Valley. The mountains are too high around it. That money is gone for sure. Oh, no. I'm getting that money back. I'll put an ad in the paper and get parachute jumpers who'll skydive into Lost Valley. Skydive? Who'd be naughty enough to make that kind of dive? Watch this dive, Chumley. A perfect swamp. <laughs> hey, Tennessee, why don't you watch this dive? A very tricky dive. We're so good, it's too bad we can't find a job as divers. Hold it. Hold everything. Uh, what's the matter, Tennessee? Just listen to this ad. Divers wanted. Big pay. Short hours. Apply Rocky Maninoff. Hood Apartments. The perfect job for us, Chumley. Let's get dressed and sneak out of here. I don't see how that ad is going to help us. Nobody would be wacky enough to skydive into Lost Valley. Somebody always answers a one-head, Pretzel. And we'll hire the first knight who knocks on that door. We're here to answer your ad for divers. You're hired. Sign the contract. But don't you want to see us dive? Just sign, Bobo. We'll watch you dive later. See how easy it is, Chumley? Now we're professional divers. That's right. And you make your first dive at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Meet me and Pretzel at the airport. Airport? I didn't know they had a swimming pool at the airport. What's with the swimming pool bit? You're going to be skydiving at the Lost Valley. Uh, uh, skydiving? Uh, but skydivers dive out of planes with uh, parachutes. You said it, Bobo. And if you don't get to the airport at 3 o'clock sharp, I'll play a little tune on my violin. Ah, uh, sure. Uh, sure, we'll be there, Mr. Mananoff. Uh, but gee, Tennessee, we don't know anything about skydiving. All right, we'll find out. We'll go see Mr. Wolfie. So, you want to know something about parachuting, eh? Well, we wouldn't want to fall down on the job, now would we? Get it? Fall? <laughs> yes. First, let's make a small model of a parachute. Great, Mr. Wuffy. What do we use? Well, we take an ordinary handkerchief and four pieces of string all the same length. We tie one end of each piece of string to one of the four corners of the handkerchief, like this. Uh, gee, Mr. Whoopie, that looks easy. It is, my boy. Next, we tie the four other ends of string to this toy soldier, or any kind of way to act as the man. And now, we're ready. We fold the parachute carefully and toss it into the air, and whoopee! It floats gently to the ground. Look at that, Chumley. Nothing to it. Of course, a real parachute is much bigger than our model usually about 24 feet across. It spreads out so far that it can't push the air out of the way easily. And that resistance is what makes the parachute float down slowly. It sure is big, all right, Mr. Whoopi. Yes, indeed. That's why a jumper can have a parachute spread out over him in a plane. The parachute must be folded up, but arranged so that it can open easily. Then it's put into a pack attached to a harness the jumper wears. When the jumper makes his leap, he lets himself fall until he's clear of the plane. And then he pulls a little cord attached to the parachute, and whoopee, it opens up. Thanks a million, Mr. Whoopee. We're making our jump this afternoon. What? Oh, no, Tennessee. I thought you only wanted some information about parachuting. You can't jump, except for real emergencies. Parachuting should only be done by those who've had very thorough training. I'm afraid it's much, much too dangerous for you and Chumley. You see, Tennessee, too dangerous for us. Sally, I didn't realize it was so dangerous. I guess we'll have to change our plans. 
Uh, but thanks anyway, Mr. Whoopi. So long, boys. Hurry, Chumley. We'd better rush back to the zoo and hide out, or that thug, Rocky Mananoff, will find us. You speaking about me, Bobo? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, sorry, Mr. Mananoff, but we just discovered we have a previous appointment for this afternoon. Uh, we won't be able to do that skydiving for you. Oh, that's too bad. Because I get very upset when you break appointments. Ah, uh, wait. Wait. I think we can uh, cancel that other appointment. And so our heroes were soon at the airport, climbing aboard Rocky Mananoff's small plane. Okay, Pretzel, Lost Valley is right below. Start circling this spot. Now, you guys remember all the instructions I gave you. And don't forget my box. Okay, which one of you is first? Uh, you go ahead, Chumley. After you. Uh, no, that's okay, Tennis B. After you. Uh, after you. Uh, after you. Uh, after you. All uh, right, uh, knock it off. I'll settle this. Yeah! It opened. Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. And now you, Boo Boo. Uh, gee, Mr. Madinoff, if you'd like to go in my place, I don't mind. Supposed to pull the cord, uh, to pull the, to, to, to pull the, with my cord, with my cord. Yeah! Uh, gee, the ground wasn't so hard after all. Get off, Chumley! Get off my parachute! Uh, okay, Tennessee, I'll come down with you. No, no, get off! Get off! We're going down too fast. We'll crash. Yeah! Jim with it, Walrus. Uh, but look over there, Tennessee. It's the box Mr. Maninoff told us to get. Well, that's good. But where's the big basket we're supposed to be picked up in? Mr. Maninoff said we'd get it right away. Uh, there, Tennessee, you got it. And moments later, our heroes with Rocky Maninoff's box were inside the basket, waiting to be picked up. Yeah. Oh! Okay, you guys, bring the box up the ladder. Sorry, Mr. Mananoff, but we've had enough. We'll just stay here. But we can't land like this. Climb up here. No thanks. Then I'm coming down. Now, give me that box. Look out. You're rocking the basket. Well, it looks like Rocky Mananoff made a perfect getaway with all that bank money. I guess we'll never find it now. Don't say that, Sarge. I bet you we'll get a break in this case yet. Oh, sure, sure. Maybe Rocky Mananoff and all the money will just come falling out of the sky right into our laps. Well, Chumley, how does it feel to be heroes? Our skydiving certainly broke up that bank robbery. Uh, yeah, Tennessee. Our skydiving just about broke up everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Livingston, some men have dropped a whole lot of boards and stuff in the yard. Good, good. It must be the new tool shed I ordered. Come on, I'll show you. We had all these shovels for the workers to use, and there was no place to keep them. So I ordered a prefabricated tool shed. Prefabricated? Yes, it means all ready to put up. See, here are the four walls, and this is the roof, all ready to go on. And the posts are all cut and ready. Why, you could put the whole thing up in a couple of hours. But you've got a lot of other things to do first, so we'll just leave it here for the time being. Well, do you think it'll be all right? Oh, of course. Who would bother a tool shed? Yes, of course. Who would bother a tool shed? Mm. This is the way we wash our clothes, wash our clothes, wash our clothes. This, this is, is the way, way we wash our clothes, wash our clothes, wash our clothes. This, this is the way we wash our clothes so early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tennessee. Hey, Chumley. What you doing? Blowing soap bubbles? No, we are not blowing soap bubbles. We are washing our clothes. Oh, that's a good idea. How about washing ours? Huh? 
Don't be ridiculous. Wash your own clothes. We'll, we'll pay you for it. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not going to wash. You'll pay money? Sure. Hmm. This gives me an idea. Here's a chance to make some real money, Chumley. We're going to clean up. Okay, Beaver Brothers, go get your clothes and spread the word. Tennessee Tuxedo's laundry is open for business. Well, Chumley, it looks like we've set ourselves up in a real going business. Everybody will be bringing us laundry. And Tennessee was right. Everybody did bring in the laundry. Tigers and turtles, bears and baboons, elegance and potamuses. Until at last, there was a mountain of laundry. Gucci, Tennessee, we can't do all that laundry in this little tub. It'll take us all year. Don't worry, Chumley, I thought of that. We're going to make the whole thing automatic. First, we need 20 wash tubs. There we are, Chumley. When the wheel goes round and round, it will move this big lever up and down, which will make these shafts slosh up and down in the tubs and wash the clothes. I told you, Tennessee Tuxedo will not fail. Uh, that's pretty smart, Tennessee, but uh, what's going to make the wheel go round? Why, uh, it's simple. Uh, uh, hmm, I hadn't thought of that. We'd better go and see Mr. Whoopi and find out about power. So, you want to learn how to make your new washing machine go, eh? Well, now, I can see how that could start you spinning. Get it? <laughs> well, how about an electric motor? No, Stanley wouldn't like us using all that electricity. Whoop! <laughs> I've got it! A windmill doesn't take any electricity. All it needs is wind. Uh, yeah, but can a windmill break a washing machine? Certainly, my boy. Men have been using windmills to do their work for them for hundreds of years. Well, you see, a windmill is a big wheel with blades attached to it, like this. When the wind blows, it pushes against the blades, which make a wheel go round. You see? <laughs> I get it. Just like a pinwheel. Exactly. And the wheel turns the shaft, which, by using pulleys or gears, can turn other things like pumps or grindstones or <laughs> washing machines. Uh, but will it really do the work? Oh, my, yes. Why, just look at all the windmills they use in Holland. There, the land is so low that seawater keeps coming in and has to be pumped out. For many years, all the pumping was done by windmills. Windmills can do a lot of work. Sounds like just what we need. Thanks a million, Mr. Whoopi. Come on, Chumley. Now, let's see. It's all done except the blades. We need some big, flat pieces. Let's look around, Chumley. We're sure to find something. All right, Flunky, we'll put up the tool shed now. With all those nice big pieces, it'll only take a couple of years. It's gone. The tool shed is gone. Uh, who would take a tool house? Yeah, well, the only one I can think of is Tennessee Tuxedo. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? It works like a charm. These big, flat pieces we found are perfect. Got all the power we need. Tennessee Tuxedo does not fail. Tennessee Tuxedo! Hiya, Stanley. Glad you dropped in. Come to get your laundry done? Quality work, speedy service. No, I did not come to get my laundry done. I came to get my tool shed. Tool, tool shed? shed? Yes, my tool shed up there on your windmill. Uh, uh, uh. Now, wait a minute, Stanley. We need... Take it down. Take it down. Take it down. But you'll ruin our laundry business. Down, down, down. So you see, Mr. Whoopi, the windmill did work, but Stanley took it back, so we need some other kind of power to do the laundry. Hmm. Well, how about a water wheel? They're easy to make, and they can give you a lot of power. Thousands of years ago, men learned how to use the power of water to turn water wheels. There are different kinds of water wheels. One has buckets around the edge. It's called an overshot water wheel because the water comes out of a trough, fills the buckets, and makes them heavy enough to turn the wheel. And when the wheel turns, it can be used to operate other machines. Absolutely right, my boy. Now, the other kind of water wheel has paddles around the edge. It is called an undershot wheel because the water flows under the wheel and pushes against the paddles and makes the wheel turn. Which is easier to build. Well, I'd say the undershot wheel. All you really need is an axle and some paddles. 
And, of course, a good stream walled brook to make it go. Lucky thing we've got a stream right next to the laundry. Mr. Whoopi, you've saved us again. You're the greatest. Come on, Chumley. All right, Chumley, there's the axle all hooked up and ready to turn. Now, all we need are the paddles. Now, let's see. What can we use? Hmm. I've got it. Come on, Chumley. Done at last. Isn't that a beautiful tool shed? Now, let's go and get the shovels. <laughs> They're gone. First, we had the shovels and no tool shed to put them in, and now we have a tool shed and no shovels. Where could they have gone? Uh, no, don't answer that. I know where they are. How about that, Chumley? How about that? Those shovels make a perfect water wheel. And look at our washing machines work. Our laundry business is going to be a success. Oh, this, this is the way, way we wash the clothes, wash the clothes, wash the clothes. This is the way we wash the clothes, wash the clothes, wash the clothes. This is the way to wash the Tennessee tuxedo! Stanley, you're just in time to help us celebrate. We're a success. Oh, this is the way we wash the clothes, wash the clothes. Stop it, stop it this instant. Ooh, I don't think I can stand it anymore. Uh, something wrong? 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 You've taken all my shovels for your crazy water wheel. That's what's wrong. And I'm taking them back. Now, wait a minute, Stanley. Wait nothing. Flunky, take those shovels. But, Stanley, we need those shovels. What you need is to be locked up. But, Stanley, we promised to do all that laundry. No, oh, you did, did you? Well, well. I'll see that you do it all right. Chumley, I thought we were going to clean up. But it looks as though our laundry business is a washout. Come on and see, 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 Tennessee Tuxedo. See, 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 Tennessee Tuxedo.